First of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for giving me an opportunity to speak here. Uh, so my, my talk is about a construction of skirm fields from gravitational instantons, uh, specifically from the multi taunat instantons, and a relation with integrable system, uh, which is the SU infinity Toda equation. Uh, so that there's not going to be I'm not going to explicitly mention twisters in my talk, but then the SU infinity Toda equation describes a scale of flat Kähler metrics, and it has some description in, in twister theory. And uh, there will be some holonomy in, in my talk as well. Okay, so um, let's start. So, so ah, I forgot to mention, sorry. So, so this work is, is based on the paper here of the same title. And so the motivation for, for this work uh, comes from the work of Atiyah, Manton and Schroes, so who proposed a model which describes elementary particles by gravitational instantons. Uh, so for example, the electron by the Taunat instanton and the proton by the Atiyah Hitchin instanton. And then um, the quantum numbers of particles are identified with the topological invariants. Um, and afterwards, uh, Franchetti and Manton has extended this model and um, gave a description of a system of electrons by the multi at instanton. Now, the, the model Atiyah, Manton and Schroer itself is inspired by the scale model for baryons. So, so let me uh, talk a little bit about this. So the scale model is a nonlinear field theory um, of, well, you, you can consider it as an approximate uh, theory for, for QCDs. And the field, the scalar field, is SU2 valued, and this is called the skirm field. And what an interesting feature for, for this model is that it admits the topological solitons. So these are non singular static finite energy solutions. And uh, they are interesting because these topological solitons are particle-like in the sense that the energy density is uh, concentrated in some finite region, so, so like a lump. And then um, their, their stability is due to the topology, th that's why it's called topological solitons, that the topology uh, differs from the vacuum solution, so it's uh, stable. Now, um, so it, it would be interesting to have a more direct relation between the scale model and the model Atiyah, uh, Manton and Schroer, or specifically to have a relation between skirm fields and the gravitational instantons. Now, this was done um, by Marcek Dunaski, so who has constructed skirm fields from, from the Tauna and the Atiyah Hitchin instantons. So, so my work, uh, so I, my work is to explore this skirm field construction and, and look at some related integrable systems. Uh, so in particular, I, I just apply this construction to, to the multi taunat instantons, which were uh, proposed to model system of electrons. And, and then I will also look at an induced matrix, which are defined on the space which, uh, where the skirm fields are defined. And this, um, this matrix is Einstein by, and it's uh, determined by a solution of SU infinity to the equation. Yeah. Okay, uh, so let's start with, with the skirm field construction. Uh, the, the scalar field, like the, the skirm field is U2 valued, and it is defined on the four dimensional Minkowski space, but we are interested in uh, static solutions because that those are critical points for the energy functional. So at a given time, you have a map from R three to S U two, and we we also impose these boundary conditions here, so that the map extends to to S three, and then and then the topological degree for for this skirm field is well defined, and this is identified with the baron numbers. Um, 
So the, the Euler, this is a Lagrangian field theory and the Euler-Lagrange equation that derived from the Lagrangian is, uh, is not integrable. Uh, however, so there's only numerical solutions that are known for, for this Skirm field, but however, there are methods for constructing analytic approximations. And one of these uh, is to construct a Skirm field, an approximated Skirm field from, from a young Mills instanton. So it was uh, first done by Atiyan Manton, so who constructed Skirm field from the holonomy of a young mu instanton on R4 along lines in one direction. So in their work, they look at the lines parallel to the time axis. So this is the, the corresponding component of the potential here. And so, so they will, so what they got is the scalar field. So, so it, it's, it's a map from R3 to SU2, which turns out to satisfy the required uh, boundary condition here. So, so this is the skirm field in, in this talk, the, the approximated one. And the degree, uh, it turns out that the degree of, of this skirm field is equal to the instanton number of the yang mu instanton you use to construct it. Now, um, so after this work, there are several extensions that look at the construction where uh, the yang mu field is, is on other Riemannian manifold rather than, than R4. So the, the construction, so, so this is a construction of skirm field from, from Yang Mills instanton. Now the construction of skirm field from gravitational instanton is based on this result. And, and also uh, another result that you can get a Yang Mills instanton from a gravitational instanton. And so this is due to the work of Sharap and Duff. Uh, and, and they've shown that on a Ricci flat background, then um, you can interpret the spin, uh, self door spin connection of, of the metric at the Young Mill field. And then this field will automatically satisfy the self door equation on the metric background. Okay. Then uh, afterward, uh, Paul and Yu uh, has used their construction to construct Yang Mills instanton from the multi Taunat instanton, uh, which was then uh, later used in the work of Marshek to construct to construct Taunat skirm field. Okay, so let's look at ah. so so my work is to apply all the the procedure to multi Taunat instanton. So this is the multi Taunat metric here. Yeah. Uh, so the flat metric and um. I'm writing it in cylindrical coordinates. Uh, v is a harmonic function, and our al alpha is a one form, which uh, related to V by this. This is the hot star operator with respect to the flat metric. Now, uh, um, in this work, so I will look at multi tonal metrics with axial symmetry. So I assume that the the harmonic function is of this form, so, so that the, the centers of the multi Taunat metric lies along the z-axis uh, with, with this position here. And I'm fixing this constant to one so that the range of, of this uh, psi coordinate is, is from naught to four pi. Now, so with, so with this metric, then we, we can calculate the self dual spin connection of this metric by, by just writing the, the metric in orthonormal tetrad and then computing the self dual two forms. Then the self dual spin connection is, can be obtained from this equation here. Then the, the Young Mills potential, the corresponding Young Mills potential, is given in terms of the self dual spin connection coefficients, like gamma JK, uh, in this way. Uh, the T here are the uh, generators of the Lie algebra of SU2. Yes, so now with, with, so with this uh, young mill potential, we, we, we now take the holonomy of this. Uh, so because our metric has axial symmetry, so we actually 
take the holonomy along the S1 orbit of, of this axial symmetry of d by d phi, then, yeah, so the holom holonomy is given by this expression here. Um, so this is what we've got, the expressions that we've got. Um, I have to mention that uh, I, I could, uh, I actually did the result in spherical coordinates. So, so it dif uh, differs from, from the cylindrical I showed you before, just to make a connection with the town at Skirm field that was constructed before. Uh, so now this is the expression I've got. And uh, so I'm choosing the representation to be, to be this, the so, uh, tau j are the Pauli matrices. Now this, this the gamma j's are the functions uh, given here. And let me uh, recall that with the axial symmetry, then my harmonic function v is independent of phi. And, and the alpha hat is the component function of the alpha, which is independent of phi as well. Now, this, uh, this family of skirm fields include the tau nut skirm field, uh, magic constructed, where the expression simplifies because uh, of much simpler V and alpha hat. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, with respect to, to this skirm field, I, I have to mention that because we calculate the holonomy along S1 orbits, uh, which have no points in common, so, uh, so this results in, <laughs> in the fact that this the skirm field is, is gauge dependent, so that there is a need to choose a preferred gauge. Now for the Townet and the TR Hitchin, um, a preferred gauge is fixed by, by the sim symmetry of the metric, but now, um, but, but to me it's not, it's not obvious how one can justify a preferred gauge for a multi Townet skirm field. Uh, which, which has uh, a consequence, and which we are going to talk about now, and this lies in the degrees. So the, the skirm field now is, a, is, def is defined on the B, which is the space of orbits of this axial symmetry, and you can um, define the topological degree, which is the, the pullback of the normalized, normalized volume form, on SU2 back to B. Now, uh, so, so Marcek has, has computed the topological degree for the Townat and Atiyah Hitchin to be two and one, respectively. Now, I, I'd like to, here, I want to comment on one feature of this construction, which is different from the original one by Atiyah and Manton, uh, which was who, who constructed the skirm field from Yang Mills instant on the flat space. So in that case, then the topological degree and the instanton numbers are equal, but this uh, is not the case here because, yeah, so, so the instanton number for the town at is one, where, where this is two. So it's, this is one of the different feature there. Now, uh, so now to, I, I would, Ideally, I would like to be able to talk about the degree for the town at, for the multi town at with n greater than one, the skirm field. Uh, but I, I find that different gauge of the spin connections can lead to, to skirm, skirm fields with different topological degree. So then, so then without, with our, you know, a good reasoning behind a preferred gauge. So it, um, I think that I hesitate to, to say anything about the degree for, for those fields. Now, uh, well, let's leave that behind and let me move on to the second part of the talk. Uh, one, one of the main results of, of this work is that uh, we, so we look at the <coughs> induced metric on the space where, where the skirm fields live, and, and that is the, the orbit, space of orbits of the axial symmetry. Now, uh, so one of our main results is to, to obtain uh, an explicit expression for, for the solution of SU infinity to the equation where related to which governs the metric on the space. Now, uh, our result uh, lies on a theorem by Lebrun, yeah, which, which says that um, 
a scalar flat Keller metric uh, with a Keeling symmetry preserving a, a Keller form can be written in a particular form and is determined by the SU infinity Toda equation. So now the, the, our multi Taunat metric is hyperkeller, then it can be shown that this axial symmetry uh, preserves a Keller form. Hence, it can be written in this uh, form of the Lebrun ansatz here. So uh, the function uh, W, the metric H, and the one form lambda are defined on the space of orbits. And, um, and there exists coordinates on the space of orbits, the, the x, y, t coordinates, uh, such that the metric can be written in this form. And, and U is a solution of the SU infinity to the equation. Okay. So now to, so our aim here is to obtain some expression for, for the corresponding solution U to this multi taunat metric. And so we can, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to mention that by the work of Jones and Hort, by the Jones Hort correspondent, this metric is, is I psi phi. Now, so to, to obtain an expression of the solution, uh, so we can do it by just writing our metric. So now I'm coming back to the cylindrical coordinates. This metric in the Lebrun ansatz, and it turns out that we can choose the coordinates x, y, t to be these expressions here. So it's a quite complicated expression. And, and, and then you can read off, sorry, you can read off um, the solution to be, to be in this form, to be just log of rho square. And the solution is independent of the y coordinate. Uh, so this is an implicit expression and not a very good one. But then it, it would be nice to, to be able to convert this to relations here, so that I got the row in, in terms of x and t, so I can get explicit expression. Uh, but it turns out that I, I'm still unable to, to do this, even for the Taunat case, where n is, great, n is equal to 1, so, so that is still not possible. Then, um, so to get a better looking expression, uh, I, I then do two more things. So the, the first thing is that I consider the limit where the number of centers of the Taunat matrix uh, becomes large. So I'll, I'll let this n in the, well, look at the limit where the n goes to infinity. Now, the, then in that limit, the harmonic function so approaches the uguri Vafa limit that far away from, from that line of centers, then it can be approximated by this function here. Then so we do the same thing with, with this approximation, with, with this function. And, and then this is an expression, an implicit expression for the solution that, that we got. Yeah, so, so with the much simpler expressions for x and t, and then, um, and then there is this log of rho square uh, appearing here as well, which uh, shows that our u is our u satisfies this equation here, and, and shows that u is constant on the cylinder. Now, and, and this adds on to to the list of solutions that constant on surfaces that was found before in this work. Okay, so, so that, that is one thing. So another thing that, that I did to get more explicit expression is to no, notice that the, the corresponding solution is actually independent of, of y. Then you satisfy this equation, a, a simpler equation without, without the y derivatives. Now, this solution uh, belongs to a class of solution of Toda equation that was studied by Richard Ward. And then in, in his paper, he gave a prescription of how one can obtain such a solution from axially symmetric uh, solution to the Laplace equation. 
solution to, to that equation there. But that is our, well, we have our ha harmonic function which determine the tau nut. Then uh, with this V and, and using Ward's procedure, it turns out now that we can get explicit expression for, for U for the tau nut case. Yeah. So, so oh, I have to point out that X and T, there are, are different coordinates of we, we, we can this Watts procedure to define differently from, from X and T in the previous slides. So we, we can get an explicit expression for the tau nut, yeah? And for the other multi tau nut with n greater than one, uh, we get implicit expressions in terms of uh, roots of polynomials. So for example, for, for the two centers, then this is the expression where the z, uh, this is the only thing, the implicit uh, the z, are the roots of these quintic polynomials. Okay, I think I have gone very quickly <laughs> because... Yes, <laughs> so in, in, depending on how to count, you, you have, in principle, you have 25 minutes. Ah! Counting <laughs> since when you started. On the other hand... We can count that. It will be on the cost of coffee break, so... Yeah. <laughs> That, that's good because, well, that's the end, <laughs> actually. So, so, <laughs> so very quick. Yeah, so, um, well, so the conclusion of the work that we, so we've, we've constructed uh, skirm fields from actually symmetric uh, multi town at instantons. Then, um, so for, for the n equal to 1 for the 1 center town at case, then uh, we, a preferred gauge is, is, is fixed by the symmetry. But then, I, but then for the multi townet case, that we still have to, to find a reason before a preferred gauge. And uh, we also look at the induced Einstein volume metrics on, on the space of orbits of the axial symmetry, which is governed by the solution of SU infinity to the equation. And then we obtain some implicit expressions of the solution. Yeah, so I will finish here. Thank you.